Hey everyone, GW Small with the Shaving Disciple here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to clean your shaving brushes. So we're going to use some Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Brush Cleaner. Um, so I've got a few brushes here that need to be cleaned. Um, two of them are actually going out for a giveaway next week. And one of them we are actually um, donating to a friend of ours so that we can see if she wants to join our little hobby here. So, um, how do you clean these guys? Uh, a lot of people might be kind of weirded out by used brushes. Uh, you don't need to be. So, I use this brush cleaner from, or this brush soap from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Uh, you can get this for $9.95 at Phoenix's website. I'll link it in the uh, description box below. So this actually contains borax and vinegar, uh, among a handful of other things. Um, you can make your own brush cleaning solutions out of borax and vinegar. Um, there are a couple of other vendors that I know that make brush soaps. Uh, Zingari Man, I think, is one of them. Um, I just I found this very easy to use. Uh, so what's in here? So what you get when you buy one of these is you get in a plastic bag here what is effectively a puck of soap. Um, now it's got these little ridges in there. There's some explanation on the box as to the importance of those, but basically it just increases the surface area to make uh, loading these brushes for cleaning them a lot faster and easier. Uh, like I said, it's got borax and vinegar. Um, the smell on it, um, I, it's not my personal favorite smell. It's supposed to be based off of, uh, I think, Aqua Velva, one of the Aqua Velva aftershaves. Um, it's, it's really, really musky to my nose, um, but the scent doesn't linger in the brush when you're done cleaning it. Um, so the other thing that comes is this plastic comb here. So let me change the camera angle and we'll go ahead and figure out how to use this. All right guys, so let's show you how I use these brush cleaners to clean my shaving brushes. Um, if you guys didn't notice, it is St. Patrick's Day when I'm recording this, so hence the shiny green shirt here. Um, so the first thing is if you're cleaning a badger brush, you want to soak that for at least a couple of minutes, preferably about five minutes uh, before you get started. Um, badger brushes particularly have very brittle hair, and so you don't want to load from a dry badger brush or you'll risk breaking and losing a lot of your hairs. So you want to soak that beforehand. So we'll do that one last, let it soak a little bit more. Um, it doesn't have to be completely submersed. Um, a lot of people don't like to submerse their badger brushes up to the handle or their any of their brushes uh, because they're worried about the glue coming out. Um, this is the way I've soaked my brushes for over seven years and I've never had a problem with a knot popping out of a handle. Um, the fibers will naturally wick the water up into the base of the knot anyways. So whether you completely submerge it or don't, that's personal preference. I, I, I leave it right about here and it works for me. All right, so we'll start with this synthetic brush. So you start by wetting it. With a synthetic brush, you don't have to soak it. Uh, they don't absorb the water in the same way a natural fiber brush does. So you really just have to get it good and wet like so. You take your brush cleaning soap and the, the, uh, the directions and shake off a little bit of that water. You want it damp. You don't want it soaked and dripping. Um, the, the directions say to move your brush in figure eight strokes um, clockwise for 10 to 15 seconds and counterclockwise for 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, I don't do it to the letter of the law there. I'll, I'll show you what I do here. So I, I do kind of try to use those figure eight shapes, but I don't conform to the 10 second rule. I just kind of 
work it until I feel like there's enough soap in there to get down into the entire knot. So why do you need to clean your brushes? Uh, isn't the act of shaving and using regular soap on these, cleaning them every time you shave? Uh, the answer is kind of, but so many of these shaving soaps these days are full of oils and butters to make them more effective that the soap can tend to accumulate if you're not getting your brushes rinsed well, which is sometimes hard to do, particularly with the natural hair brushes. The synthetics, to me, seem to rinse away cleaner, um, but even with the synthetics, you'll start to see um, the knots, the center of the brush might start looking a little bit deformed. Um, that is due to soap accumulation, basically the combination of soap accumulation and using the brush, deforming the hairs and keeping them in that deformed state because there's soaps build up in there. So borax and vinegar are two of the best things in the world for removing soap scum. So that's probably enough there. So I just kind of to make sure I've got it in the center of the knot as well. I just kind of load it on the brush there. Make sure you got plenty in the brush. So you're going to have to rinse your hand because the next step involves the comb. So what you want to do now is very, very gently, I actually skim the top here to get some of this soap in the comb, like so. You want to very, very gently, with the wide portion of the comb, um, almost never do you want to use the thin portion of the comb and you'll risk pulling your, your fibers out of your brush. So you just kind of comb, very, very gently, comb through the brush. And I just kind of put that soap back on there, comb through the brush. Again, get that soap back in there, comb through the brush. And I start kind of at the top to make sure there's no tangles in the brush. And as you've made your way around and you're sure there aren't any tangles in there that are going to hang you up, you can start going down a little bit deeper into the brush. Now you don't want to push hard and get a good grip on those bristles. You want to make sure you're being gentle enough that you're not pulling hairs out of the brush. But you do want to get some of that soap down into the base of the knot too. Particularly if you're disinfecting for a giveaway um, or selling one of your brushes. Um, the vinegar is one of the best disinfectants in the world for particularly for bacterial and viral um, I actually have struggled with folliculitis, and one of the things that they prescribed for my bacterial infections was vinegar compresses because vinegar is so effective at killing so many things. So that's the, one of the big benefits of this brush cleaning soap that I've been using, the PAA version, is it does have the vinegar in it. Uh, like I said, you can mix up your own solutions of vinegar and water. Um, I just find this easier to use that I'm going to worry about mixing things up and so just kind of make sure that's been worked all through the brush. And this is a very well broken in brush. I've had this for quite a number of years. It's recently become my wife's brush. Um, All right, so there you go. So you now have gotten this soap through the process all in through the knot as well as on the handle. So everything is nice and disinfected now. So now you want to rinse this completely in the sink. You want to make sure you get all the soap out of it.
I'm just kind of gently comb through the bristles. A lot of people don't like pouring the water directly down into the knot like that. Some people recommend you keep the brush sideways or you hold the bristles while you do it. Um, I've never found it made much of a difference. Like I said, I, in seven years, I've never had a knot pop out of a handle. Um, so I just tend to, I do what I need to do to make sure I'm getting the water all the way down into the knot. So the other reason you might need to consider, so when you're done with that, shake out the excess water. Uh, you can gently squeeze the excess water out as well, as long as you're not pulling on the knot, just kind of squeezing it with your fingers. You can do that as well. I tend to just shake it out, and then I take the brush, dry it off, and then lightly brush it on a towel. And that will start to dry it out well. And then you can set it aside and move on to the next one. So the next one, I'll do the badger brush just to show you. It is it's pretty much the same process, but like I said, it's a little bit different. You have to be a little bit more gentle with the badger knots. So I'm going to shake that out and gently squeeze. wide side of the comb. Pick up a little bit of that soap. Just going to spread it around the knot here. And you can already kind of see the there are some badger hairs that are kind of pointing in not ideal directions, which is why you have to be a little bit more careful with the badger brushes. So I actually I actually kind of brace the knot with the back of my finger while I'm doing this, and gently, gently comb through the top first. Make sure there's no knots in there. That's probably good. You can kind of see there's soap worked all through that knot. So again, same process, and water temperature, I mean, you don't want to use super hot water with these brushes just because it can affect the integrity of the glue. Um, I've never seen it happen, but I've heard people using really, really hot water can have problems. So I, I typically just use warm sink water when I'm doing this. And with a badger, I do typically protect the knot a little bit better as I run the water down in there. And again, shake out the water. Dry it off. Now with the badgers, I actually hold them over the tub and give them a good shake. I don't know if you heard that off camera. Um, and then Again, I brush on the towel, but I do it very, very gently with the badgers. Not nearly as aggressively as I do it with the synthetics. And what that does is it, it kind of helps restore the bulb shape of the knot so that it's not all pinched from being soaked and shaken out. All right, so I'm going to do this other one off camera and then we'll come back to wrap up. Okay, so our brushes have dried a little bit, um, still a little bit damp, but um, they smell nice. They're nice and clean, disinfected, and ready to be sent off to somebody else. Um, now, 
let them dry out thoroughly before you do anything else with them. But they should smell much better. Um, I do this with my brushes. I have mostly synthetics, as you can see in the background. Um, I do this with my brushes probably once a year. Um, I, I have enough brushes that I don't use them often enough to need to do it any more than that. Um, you can do it as often as you feel comfortable. There's nothing damaging about the vinegar or the borax. Um, the most damaging part of, or potentially damaging part of this process is the combing, um, which is why I would suggest don't do it like weekly. Um, but if you wanna do it every three months, every six months, not a big deal whatever you feel comfortable doing, um, but I do suggest you do it every once in a while, uh, particularly with the badger brushes, which can tend to hold soap scum a lot more. Um, but even the synthetics, um, this one is really, really well used. I've had this for probably six, five, six years, um, and I abused it when I first bought it because I didn't really know how to treat synthetic brushes back then. Um, so you can see it's kind of got a flat flatness to the bulb. Um, it still lathers well, still works perfectly, um, but it's got a little bit of a deformation in the center of the bulb there. Um, if your synthetics start getting that, it's, it's usually soap scum. So giving it a brush cleaning at the first sign of any deformation there can really help prolong the life of your synthetic brushes as well. Uh, so like I said, I prefer to use the Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements uh, brush soap, and I'll link that in the description below. Hope you guys found this video helpful, and I hope you have a great week.